Now, I don't want to give away spoilers in my book before it gets published, because I really want this to get, around, to get out and to attack the collective psyche of Western society especially. But I will indulge a little on what it's going to talk about, and that is that I'm going to point out most everything that I oppose. And that includes, you know, uh, ethnic identity, cultural identity, capitalism, obviously. Uh, just pretty much anything that can distinguish between people. You know, when you get right down to it, the sorts of people that complain about the state, uh, you know, Mark Anthony especially, loves to remind me of the brutality of communism, blah, blah, blah. And I don't really talk about the state all that much in the book. And when I do talk about the state, I apologize to the state. And there's a specific reason for that. The state is only a reflection of the ills of capitalism and other reactionary qualities. If you take those out of the picture, what does the state have to be corrupt about? In fact, what sort of state could you possibly have? See, this is what people aren't getting. Uh, you know, if there wasn't this nationalist movement perpetuating this specific race or this specific nationality or this specific anything, as a protected class, as somehow separate from everybody else. And if there wasn't capitalism, where the class is oriented towards having more money, having more things, having more land, and they have to set standards that the rest of us have to follow. Without the capitalism, without the races, without the ethnic groups, without anything, what is there for the state to be corrupt over? The state can only be corrupt because it has to defend these institutions in order to stabilize them. In order for society to maintain itself under the basis of one class over here and another class over there, there has to be some kind of, you know, axiom of that. So, if you take away the axiom, if you take away the idea that people are different ethnically, that people are different financially, that people are somehow different and this difference has to be validated, and this difference has to be enforced, then where does the state come in? So this is why I don't blame the state. Because the state could not exist, at least not in the normal sense of the word, uh, if you took away the environment in which feeds that corrupt state. You know, I'm sure there could be a secular state that enforces the rule of law in people in very authoritarian and brutal ways. But then, that is still a class struggle. That is still a society that says that these people over here are of a ruling class, an elite, and that they're better than you, and that these people over here have to be ruled over for the good of everybody. So you still have some kind of group sensation. You still have some idea that people are inherently different. And while it may not be because they own territory, they own land and property and value, it may not be because their skin color is different, it may not be because they di believe in a different kind of God, the idea here is that there is one class of people and then there is another. That's what it all comes down to. That's why I oppose organized religion, that's why I oppose nationalist movements, including the gay movement, that's why I oppose uh, capitalism first and foremost, and that's the Especially why I oppose moderators. So, you know, all of that's going to be indulged upon. That you're not going to solve this problem overnight. But that communists should oppose all these institutions. That's why some communists are militantly against the church. And are militantly against, you know, any sort of ethnic identity. You know, not as much. Uh, communists seem to be a lot more willing to compromise with racial nationalists and stuff than they are religious nationalists. And I don't quite understand that myself. Because it seems to me racial na uh, religious nationalists are less threatening and ominous than uh, racial nationalists. Because you can all be of the same religion, in theory. In theory, there could be one dominant religion and then there wouldn't be religion, in a sense. Because... If everyone is the same religion, then there is no more class struggle. There is no more difference between the believer and the non-believer. It then becomes, you know, people accusing one another of uh, heresy and blasphemy. But that's semantics. And yes, while that could still exist within any society, it sounds a lot less imposing than this idea of, well, because you look different than me, 
you have less rights or different rights than I do. So I, I don't understand why there's more anti-religion than anti-ethnicity groupings and anti-nationalist movements that just seem to be on the rise. And especially with the gay movement, which is almost like a religious nationalist movement, because you can't know somebody's gay just by looking at them. I know what a fucking concept that everybody calls me homophobic, but you don't see me going around accusing people of being a homosexual. I don't know you're homosexual until you classify yourself as that. Until you make the decree that you are homosexual, I have nothing to base it off of. I could assume, I could assume because of the way you carry yourself that you're homosexual, but unless I see you sticking your tongue down the throat of someone of your same gender, or you announcing it, there is no proof of you being homosexual or not. So therefore, it is your fault if you get discriminated against because you're the one that wanted to. You wanted to create this class differentiation. You wanted to say, I'm this and you're that and that makes us different and I deserve certain privileges because of my differences. That's what it all comes down to. And apparently I can't fucking say that on the internet. Where some people can run child pornography websites but I cannot simply say that gays are a nationalist movement and I do not support them in any regard. No, I'm the troll for that. I get fucking banned and censored for that. But fucking Moot can make money while child pornography is being distributed on his website. Facebook can fucking prowl upon your personal information and jeopardize your life because all of your, you know, details, personal details, your zip code, possibly your social security number and shit, are there for just someone to take, and that's perfectly okay. But this guy right here can't say a goddamn thing. And you're perfectly okay with that because you think that the capital owners get to make those kinds of rules. Because they're the superior class. They're the fucking gods of this world, and we're supposed to worship them. And, you know, you don't believe in equality. I don't give a fuck if you could support gays or if you say that, you know, we should have racist or You don't believe in equality. You don't. Shut up. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. As long as you support one class of people being able to tell you what the fuck you can and can't do, you may as well just join the Ku Klux Klan right now. Just hold up that sing hell fucking sign, become a Nazi, say that you hate Jews and Mexicans and blah blah blah. It's the same fucking shit. It's the same shit that because of these different differentiations we make up in our heads that one gr group of people gets to have privilege and power and another group of people doesn't. And that we try to, you know, muddy it up by saying that, oh, well, everybody's equal, just different. So they have different privileges and different forms of authority. But it's all bullshit. And at the end of the day, it's one person holding a gun and holding a gun to your head. Why should anybody get to hold a gun to my head? Why should anybody get to hold a gun to your head? Why? Because they're of a different race? Because they believe in a different god? Because they were born a little richer? Because they own a little more land than I do? What, what, you know, it's all bullshit. There is no justification for it. But you'll make justification for it because you're fucking evil and stupid. So, that's why, along the lines of in the book, I call myself the world's smartest man. Not because, you know, I'm so vastly more intelligent than anybody else. Anybody could do what I do. It's the fact that I'm the only one willing to say it. I'm the only one willing to admit it. I mean, there are other people willing to admit it, obviously, a lot of my viewers and stuff. But first and foremost, I'm one of the few willing to admit it. And I take a lot of heat because of it. But someone's got to say it, because it's not going to get done by itself, you know. And we're growing in a more and more disparity by waiting. But as time goes on, we're not going to have any freedom whatsoever. You are, possibly in your lifetime, going to live in a world where they can literally control your mind. Where they can use technology to shape you the way they want you to act and feel. And do you honestly think that people that have that kind of absolute power over you are going to give a shit about you? Are you willing to take that gamble that they will 
feel something inside of them to show you mercy and love and to make a world where everybody gets along and lives in peace with one another. And the hungry never have to starve, where world hunger ends and there's no cancer, there's no, uh, you know, sickness or famine, there's no wars, there's no crime, there's no anything. No, it's going to be like a Sims game, and they're going to leave you in a corner to piss on yourself and start burst into flames and shit. They're going to torture you. They're going to torture you, they're going to inflict pain on you, and they're going to love it. They're, they're going to literally want to see you die and suffer, because that's... They feel entitled to that, as the God race, as the God people, as the chosen ones. So, hopefully that'll make you see it a little, I guess a bit.